name is Talia Kaplanian, and I am a junior computer science and biology double major at Boston College, and I'm currently working as a quality engineering intern on the Central CI and tooling team at Red Hat. Today, I'm going to take you through the tale of the open provisioning proof of concept. The tale I'm about to share with you is based on a true story, and like many true stories that abstract complex moral teachings, this one abstracts the project that I had been working on this summer a tool for teams to provision resources using an agile integration methodology, leveraging containers, APIs, and distributed integration. What is provisioning, might you ask? Provisioning is fundamentally the process of setting up IT infrastructure or allocating data and resources and making them available. While this definition feels a little technical, one might compare the process of provisioning to baking many cakes with lots of flavors and layers and textures. And so our story begins. Once upon a time, there was a man named Paul Cormier who moved to a town famous for its annual cake day celebration. While intentions were pure to celebrate cake in all of its glory, the reality of the celebration was quite tragic. Everyone in the town wanted to bake their own cake with their own tools and their own unique combinations of flavors, and it was a mess. Paul thought to himself that this seemed like a lot of unnecessary work. To make a new flavor or add new toppings doesn't change the fundamental building blocks of a cake, right? So if everyone in town wanted to bake a cake for cake day, couldn't there be a way to standardize all of those common steps? Paul thought heavily about this when there was suddenly a knock at his front door. Paul opened it to find a flyer on his doorstep. A desperate call to arms, no more chaotic cake days. But Paul had seen these flyers before. Mr. Holloway, a freelance baker on the other side of town, had been posting flyers, giving speeches in the town square, and trying to recruit locals for a machine that he wanted to build that would streamline the baking process. Paul hadn't heard of anyone giving him the light of day, but now he was intrigued, so he paid a visit to Mr. Holloway. Upon arriving, Paul recounted his thought process to Mr. Holloway and found that the both of them were very much on the same page. Together, they began the process of building this machine. The premise being that Paul would be able to choose all of the components of his cake from a set menu of options, and the machine would make the cake and return it to Paul. Paul would not have to provide any ingredients, tools, or special notes except for the exact cake that he wanted. Mr. Holloway also recommended the use of OpenShift Metals and Gears, the best in the world and the only ones that would allow them to host his order-taking menu software. In order to ease the trouble of switching out the machine's internal tools as they became outdated or they broke, like ovens and stirring utensils, Paul and Mr. Holloway used universal adapters to connect to the mainframe of the machine. And finally, after much hard work, the machine was complete. Paul and Mr. Holloway took their machine to the town square to present it to everyone as the solution to cake day. Paul began his demonstration and selected the components of his cake he chose a three-layer cake, vanilla on the bottom with Boston cream on top, followed by darkest chocolate with chocolate ganache, raspberries, and walnuts, and finished with a red velvet tear with vanilla buttercream and shredded almonds. The machine whirred and sputtered and did some magic, and out the other side came Paul's cake. The crowd was silent. Then one voice called out, I'm allergic to nuts. Your machine is useless to me. Another said, I'm gluten-free. Does your machine know how to make a gluten-free cake? I don't think so. One more said, I have sensitive teeth. I need a soft cake. Tell it I want a soft cake. And many more voices joined along. Paul quickly quieted the crowd and then spoke. You're right. My machine doesn't support those things. But all you have to do to change that and make it work for your cake is to plug in a new tool. If you remember, Paul and Mr. Holloway used universal adapters so that any tool could be replaced when needed. By doing this, however, they were actually able to hit two birds with one stone. When someone down the line wanted to add a new flavor or type of cake, all they would have to do is plug in another tool with the universal port. Now the story ties directly to the project that I've been working on this summer. The cake machine is representative of the open provisioning proof of concept that we're building, and all of the features translate directly to the features of our POC except our machine creates system environments for Red Hatters with tools like Beaker and OpenStack, and we'll soon be adding even more functionality through other tools with our easy backend connection that causes little to no change to the user experience. Mr. Holloway is a real person and the actual lead developer and godfather of this project. Paul Cormier is also a real person. And if you don't already know, he was sadly not a part of the actual POC. 
And unfortunately, cake day is not real, but it could be. We could have a red hat cake day. I'm just saying, I'm looking at you people team. Anyways, thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or wanna learn more about the POC, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll happily get back to you or visit our Confluence page that was linked in the last slide and you can find the answers to remember your questions there. See you all later. Thank you very much, Talia. Would you like to come on video and uh, answer any questions? Hello. Hey, that was very well done. <laughs> Excellent presentation. Thank you. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good format. I hadn't seen that done before. <laughs> so does anyone have questions for Talia? She is here with us. We have 11 folks here. Your talk gained several people as it went along, so. It's like, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you're seeing the chat, but it looks like people really enjoyed your presentation, so. <laughs> I, I appreciate the intern support here. <laughs> it was an excellent job. Thank you. Okay. Well, do you have anything you want to add or anything you want to say? Um, no. Oh. oh, you have a question. I so uh, Arctika uh, Patnaik uh, asked, how did you think about this idea of presentation? Um, I, uh, I had actually reached out to a number, another um, person on my team asking for some advice um, of how to do a technical presentation. I've never done one before. And the two things that he said, that really stuck with me were make sure you tell it like a story, like start with the origin of the project and then talk about the different conflicts you went through and then um, how you resolved it. Um, and then he also said to have fun with it. And so I really took him, took him really literally. <laughs> and, um, and then this was born. I also figured anyone who's watching it, if I talk about the technicalities of it, will probably not be paying attention anymore after a couple of minutes. And so, if I could make it more fun and make people understand it in an easier way than I, than I would. It was very good. So very much agreed. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Talia. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Okay. You too.